Hey, Gen Chem 1 lab class. Um, the last video I made had no sound. So I have to do it again. Um, hopefully I remember everything. I'm going to try. <laughs> Once it's out of my mouth, I don't remember what to say after. Um, okay, so uh, first I want to start with a warning about if you ha are retaking the class uh, and you were here last semester or even in the spring, um, it's important to note we have changed a number of things. Things are in a different order. We've rewritten lab experiments. So it's important that you are submitting new work and not just reusing stuff that maybe uh, that you submitted before. Or similarly, if you happen to have a friend who might have taken Gen Chem before now, you should realize you can't just look at their assignments and use that as the basis for what you're supposed to do because pretty much everything is totally different. Okay, so to begin with, our first day of lab is going to be structured entirely different than what we did last semester. So, and I think better. The goal uh, was to simplify things and make it clearer to students what to do and lighten your load as much as I can. Um, so for the first day of lab, if I sent you an email saying you're in A group, then you're going to come to lab on Wednesday at 2.30 until 3.30. After that, I'm expecting you to go print things in the learning commons. So almost all of our pro procedures are available to print. You will need to have them um, after the first week. We don't print them for you. So you'll have to go print them. You can do that free in the learning commons, which is um, the big glass building on campus. So I figure if you're only using one hour of your lab time this week, that's a good opportunity to go print those experiments. The only ones that you won't be able to print, there's two of them because I'm rewriting them. So there are no links on them for two of the procedures. I'll let you know when I get those finished and you can print them at that time. You'll have plenty of warning before you actually need to do the experiments. Um, if you're in group B, I would recommend going to the Learning Commons first, you know, during your normally scheduled lab period, and then you'll be joining me at 4.30. Now it's important to note that it's gonna take you a little bit of extra time to get through all the procedures in order to even get into the science building. So um, the way it, it's working, as far as I know, sometimes the students get better messages than faculty do. So if anyone has other info, please tell me. But w what we do is fill in some information on the Campus Clear Act, and then you go through the security checkpoint, which is in ACC. It's right next door to our building. And then once you've got the bracelet from them, you're able to come into the ST building, Science and Technology building. And what you're going to see when you get to the chemistry lab is on one of the walls in the hallway are a bunch of numbered flasks like this. Um, you just find one and stand next to it, OK? Um, right outside of ST 130 is where you're looking. Um, if you're looking at the door, it'll be on your left, OK? Um, this is going to be. The, that's basically where your lab station is for the rest of the semester. So you want to sort of take note of which number you end up with. Okay. Uh, make sure you're standing against the wall where those flasks are at so that people can walk by you on the opposite wall and still be six feet apart. It's an, it's, there's just barely enough room to do that. Okay. Um, once I get there, well, I'll be there before you probably, but once I open the lab door, um, after I move out of the way, we'll come in one at a time, whoever's closest to the door, put our backpacks on the hooks by the front door. All you need this week is a pen or a pencil. So that's all you have to bring with you, yourself and a pen or a pencil. Um, and then you'll go to the, the numbered station that matches whatever you were standing by. So if I was standing by the number two, when I get into the lab, I would look at all of the big pillars um, on top of the benches and I would look for the number two. That's where your station's gonna be at. Um, there's going to be an unlocked drawer with a particular color of tape or a sticky circular dot on it. Um, I'll tell you which color of drawer belongs to you. That's your drawer for the entire semester. So you can bring in your personal protective equipment. You can bring in um, extra pens, hair ties, whatever it is that you need for lab so that I know you've already got your supplies and you're ready to go. You don't need to bring in the PPE until week two or three, depending which group you're in. So we'll talk about that in just a second. Um, 
This week, I am going to go over, I'm going to do a demonstration from the front of the room. You're going to be able to watch it on iPads that will be at your station. We're going to connect to Zoom even in the lab so you can get a closer view of what I'm going to do. And also so that during lab, you guys can ask each other questions. You can ask me to get you things in Zoom and it'll be an easier way of communicating than having to wait, um, you know, raise your hand, having to wait for me to come and see what you need. Um, and you can also share your video if you have to, if you want to show something close up so I can see it. The voice chat won't work well in the lab because it's going to be very loud from our extra ventilation. So we're basically using Zoom just for the text capability and the video sharing. Okay. But everybody will have an iPad there and you'll log into the Zoom meeting as soon as you come. And, and that's how we're going to handle that kind of thing. You'll also be able to hear me because I'll have a microphone um, and a PA system. So you should be able to hear me wherever I am in the room which is actually really good because last semester one of the difficulties people had was being able to hear um, over the mask and the loud fans that we have going. So that's an improvement. Um, if you're in group A, you will also be coming for week two. That's when you're going to need to have your personal protective equipment. So that's going to include goggles that go all the way around your face, not ones that look like sunglasses. They have to, they have to actually touch your face right here. Okay. And you're going to want to look for some with vents because we will also have masks on. Masking is mandatory all over campus. Um, and so it's important to have a mask where your goggles can sit on top of the mask or take a piece of medical tape and tape, tape across your nose so that the condensation doesn't build up right there. Okay. Um, and then you're going to also need a lab coat or a lab apron. Either one is fine with me. They both are sold at the bookstore. Um, the apron is the cheaper option. Lab coats are more durable, but aprons are like five bucks. You're also going to need, um, gloves. Well, I think we have gloves that you can use actually. So until we run out anyway, you won't have to buy your own. Um, and then you're going to also need a lab notebook that's capable of making copies of everything you write. So let me show you an example of that. So the bookstore carries all of these things. And in fact, the goggles they sell, I actually, um, there's a few that I think are better for our purposes than what you'll find at like Lowe's or Walmart or Home Depot or whatever. And the reason is because the way the vents are set up, they should be better at venting than the ones you can buy um, at Walmart. But it depends on the style you pick. If you wear glasses, you're going to want to kind of look at what you think will fit over your glasses. Okay. But you also are going to need to get a um, duplicate copy uh, student lab notebook. These are also called carbonless copy. That's what I searched for up here. Carbonless lab notebooks. Basically, when you write on the first page, it's going to copy through to the next page. And so this is important because at the end of every experiment, except the first one, when you're in person, you're going to be bringing me your copies. And this is helpful because if you lose your lab notebook, you don't have to repeat the experiment. We already have a copy of the data. Um, also, it, it allows me to help you during office hours. If you can't get a calculation, I can look at your data and we can figure it out together. And it's much easier um, than taking 100 different pictures of your lab notebook and sending it back and forth. Okay, so these range from like 12 to $20. This one notebook will be enough for Gen Chem 1 and Gen Chem 2. Um, you'll need that by your second time in lab. So for group A, that's going to be week two. For group B, that's going to end up being week three. Okay. So lab goggles, lab apron or lab coat. Don't worry about the gloves. We got that for you. Um, lab notebook. Okay. And then of course, everybody wears a mask all the time. Um, so those are the things you need to buy for lab. Everything else is provided to you. There's no lab book to buy. You just print out the procedures that we wrote. Um, and that's it. And so I hope that answers any lingering questions you may have. Um, if not, I hope you jump onto the Discord and you start asking questions. Because if you have a question, I'm sure another student does. So be brave and be the one to ask it, OK? Um, you can also send me an email if it's a more personal question. My email address, of course, is amiller at mvcc.edu, but you can also find it in both the lab and lecture Blackboard sites. This is our lab site. 
if you just click right here, email instructor. Okay. Um, a couple of other little things in Blackboard. This is the lab syllabus. This is an important document for you to know about. This is where you're going to find all the procedures that you need to print. You don't need to print the first one, but from there on. Oh, if you want to be extra prepared for lab tomorrow, um, there are videos linked uh, showing the procedure of how to do the measurements we're doing tomorrow. Not tomorrow. It's Monday. I mean Wednesday. The measurements we're doing on Wednesday. Um, so if you have a few minutes, go watch those quick videos, and then you'll be even more prepared for lab, on, uh, and you'll be ready to leave on time, and that would be great. When it's time to submit your lab reports, you're going to do that by clicking on course materials. Here's our syllabus again. Before the second laboratory period, you must watch everything in this, um, this folder. It's a good idea to take notes because there's going to be a quiz in lab about the materials in those videos. But it'll be your second visit, not this week. Um, here's some ways to help you. You know, how do you upload things? How do you, how do you take things on paper and make them into a PDF? And all that kind of stuff is located in there. And then for every single report that you need to turn into me, there is a submission link. And so all you'll do here is just click it. It tells you how many points possible. You want to read this information. I know it looks like a bunch of small print, but it's not. This is things I have put in there to help you be successful on that report. So read that. This part is from the college. It's about our safe assign system. So every single report that gets submitted in Gen Chem um, is submitted to the institutional database. And what this does is it makes sure that you're not using past lab reports. You're not using someone else's lab reports. You're not quoting or plagiarizing from Wikipedia or wherever, right? So make sure that you're citing things pro properly so that when I see Safe Assign tells me there's a there's a similarity flag and I look at it and it's quoted, it's okay. If I look at it and it's not quoted, not okay, right? That's copyright problems right there. So you can upload these file types, only these file types. Don't do anything else. I would always suggest PDF. It turns out the best in every case, um, except for when I ask you guys to submit your spreadsheet documents that have to be in Excel. And then you must click this I agree button after you have uploaded from your local or maybe your cloud service. I don't know. After you upload it and then you just click submit and it'll come through to me. And so if you do this early, like say I have a lab report due in two weeks, if I write it and upload it week number one, then there's an opportunity for revision. There's an opportunity to get feedback and improve it. And that's how you become a really good scientific writer. Okay. So I would encourage everybody um, not to rely on the two-week time period. Because for one thing, most of the time, people forget what they did in that period of time. You would have done two labs, right? And you're like, which one's which? You get confused. Um, so I think it's better to do it the same week that you do the experiment. And if you upload it and you shoot me an email, I can go on there and give you some feedback. And that's a really good tactic to get an A. Okay? Everybody who takes advantage of that gets an A. You can also come into my office hours, and you can show me what you're working on, and um, we can go through it together. All right, and that's a really, really good way of passing lab um, with flying colors if you're if you're consistent. Okay, it's going to be a great semester. Um, we get more time in the lab this semester than in the spring of last year or the fall of 2020. So that's good news, and I'm excited for it. Um, as always, if you, when you have questions, reach out to me.